Hello everyone, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Carla Arcana, also known as the Trailblazer. Good morning. And so listen, I only have about 15 minutes. I want you guys to come on in the room, swipe and invite, and we're gonna have some dialogue this morning. We're gonna have some conversation. Um, today was actually supposed to be the day that I, according to my schedule, my blueprint, that I begin the Write Like a Boss training series called Write Like a Boss, and I was gonna share some pros of wisdom through my book, my workbook and coaching program called Write the Book Already, How to Write a Best-Selling Book in Seven Days. But um, I was actually led in a different direction today. So as you're coming in, good morning. If you will, go ahead, swipe and invite. Press the three dots on the screen. Invite your followers. Also share on Facebook and Twitter. And so my name is Carla Arcana, also known as The Trailblazer. I'm an author, a speaker, a <laughs> coach. I'm ultimately a cultivator of people. Forget all the titles. I'm a cultivator of people, whether it is via my website, which is an information center, whether it is via my uh, global movement called Women of Standard, where our goal is to help you unlock, unleash, and be activated into your purpose, whether it is via the books that I write, the conferences and workshops that I host, and, and you know, clients that I coach. I am ultimately a cultivator of people. And so what I want to talk to you about this morning, again, we will be starting the Write Like a Boss training series. Write Like a Boss training series. So if you haven't already, you want to go on my website and get this workbook. It's $39.99, and it takes you step-by-step step through the writing the book process. And I also have a coaching program called Write the Book Already, in which you get this absolutely free, and it takes you even deeper than the workbook does. And all of that can be found at CarlaCannon.com. So today we're talking about developing a positive self-image. And I feel like before I can go into Write Like a Boss, um, we need to talk about self-image. Last week we talked about... Um, act like a lady, think like a boss. We talked about mindset. And so this morning we're talking about how to rebuild after you've been torn down. Is there anybody has ha that ever had negative words spoken to you? You ever had someone to say something to you? You're never going to be nothing. You just like your mama. You just like your daddy. You can't do this. You can't do that. Well, guess what? Any of those words that were ever spoken over our lives, whether we realize it or not, whether we're cognizant of it or not, we carry those things with us until we have followed these steps, these six steps that I'm going to share with you today. And um, briefly, I'm going to share um, a little bit of my story. Um, I grew up, you know, um, my father was in and out of the home. My mother worked all the time. I have one older sibling, my sister. And... Um, and so I was my mother's problem child. She had two children. Come on, keep swiping and inviting. My mother had two children. I was her problem child. I was the needy one. I was the one um, that was identified. I was labeled as behaviorally, emotionally handicapped, meaning that they said I had an inability of, of, of managing my emotions, an inability of getting along with other people. And so I was also told that I was hyperactive, so they put me on Ritalin. Um, in elementary school, even a little bit through middle school, they put me on Ritalin, um, which is supposed to be a medication that is to help calm you, but actually what it did was it made me feel like a zombie, and it made me feel like I was itching, and I was nervous, and you know, kind of like some addictive type tendencies, you know what I'm saying, you know how you get that, yeah, I started feeling like that, and so um, all of those things begin to play on my self-esteem. I got pregnant at 17, had my daughter at 18, lost my virginity at 14. Let me just go back for a minute. Was told I had a teacher that literally told me you, that I was good for nothing. You know, because I was a problem child, I was very defiant. I was very um, disrespectful. Um, I was very moody. Um, one day I could be one way, I could come in the next day and, and be a completely different way. But what they didn't understand that along with the spirit of defiance, I actually was coming to school acting out what I saw act out at home. I was watching my mother have fights and arguments with her husband at that time. And so I would come to school and act out. I was being physically abused by my stepfather at that time. He would sit on my head to spank me. Y'all know I've done the demonstrations. If you read The Power and Waiting, The Entrepreneur Blueprint, then you know even more of this story. And if you don't have 
have those products, head over to CarlaCannon.com and um, you'll get more of that story. And so in everything that I do, I incorporate my story and that is what helps you write like a boss, speak like a boss, have the confidence that we need because y'all know it's making Boss Moves Monday. And so in the midst of all of those things and those experiences, it helps shape my reality. And see, even we're going to do, uh, we're going to do a teaching called Managing Your Money Like a Boss, right? The mindset, uh, the millionaire mindset. Uh, we're going to go through that training with T. Harp Ecker, and that's coming as well. And so he talks about how um, how our, since our experiences help shape our mindset. And so because I had all of these things spoken of in my life, I was told what I wasn't, what I couldn't do. I was often criticized. I was called crazy. I was, I mean, I was just called all kind of stuff. So guess what I began to do? When you are a child, you begin to take those things on. Holla if you hear me. You begin to embrace those things and feel like, well, if everybody is saying it, this must be true about me. If everybody is saying I'm no good, I'm trifling, I'm just like my whoever, and that's why you don't know your daddy, then there must be some truth in it because the people I love are calling me names. The people that are supposed to validate me are actually belittling me. And so if we're not careful, we're talking about developing a positive self-image, how to rebuild after you've been torn down. If you're not careful, you'll begin to take the words and the opinions of other people people and you embrace them as your reality. I had someone to look me in my face uh, about five years ago and tell me God didn't call you. And the truth of the matter is that always stuck with me because of A, who it came from, and then B, that was something I already wrestled with because I didn't come from a lineage of preachers. I didn't come, um, that, that just wasn't my background, so I always had already wrestled with that. And if you're not careful, you got to go ahead and deal with, this is what I was going to say, if you're not careful, um, you will, the enemy, he knows our insecurities. So it's so important to deal with our insecurities now so that someone else doesn't identify and call you out on it and not in a way to help you overcome, not in a way to help you rebuild, but in a way to tear you down and to destroy you and so because he looked me in my face and was like that's why God didn't call you I realized four years later I was still struggling in my call I was still wrestling with the prophetic gift and the anointing and felt like I had to separate pulpit from marketplace and just just really struggling to find my place due to the words that was spoken over me now, I want to pause here, and for those of you that have children, you have to be very careful the words that you release in their life, because back in the day, we heard the saying, which we all know is untrue, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. My jaw will heal. My black eye you know, I'll recover from that. But your words, oh my goodness, words are so powerful. And so even as a coach, as a mentor, as a cultivator, as a catalyst, I am so careful not to tell my clients what they cannot do. Somebody can come to me with the craziest idea ever. And I might be like, that is absolutely insane. But I would tell them, listen, if you, if you believe that's what God called you to do, go for it. And here's the deal. We got to stop looking for other people. Hold on, here's the deal. When we have been torn down so much to a degree, we begin to seek validation for other unqualified individuals. I'm going to say that again. When you've been torn down, when you've been beat down, when you've been bombarded down with the issues of life, with um, you know not having a father, the father is the first voice. Come on, that is to validate you, that is to bring, you know, bring about security, that, that helps you embrace your, first of all, identify and embrace your identity. And when that is not there, we will find ourselves looking for validation, seeking for approval from unqualified people. And this is, this is how we end up in toxic relationships. And this is how we end up um, embracing uh, uh, Judas as our friend, not recognizing those Judas tendencies. And this is how we end up with these, un, you know, these defeated cycles over and over and over. So the good news is I'm going to help you to overcome those things because, and here's the truth of the matter. Some things in life will be, it will take longer processes than others. Some of you are literally beating yourself up right now in this moment because you say I should be over that by now or I shouldn't still be struggling with that I should you know um that shouldn't bother me anymore and the truth of the matter is healing takes time 
and you, you know, you're not God. And so there's some, the same way it took time for those things to get programmed in your system, it got to get deprogrammed. Come on, it got to get unprogrammed out of your system. And so I want to encourage you. This is why I want you to go to my website, CarlaCannon.com, and scroll down and put your name and email in there so that you can get my I am affirmations. And the reason why I'm so big on affirmation and anybody that knows me knows that words are so powerful. So I'm not, you know, you think you're one of those people to be like, well, you know what I meant. No, I know what you said. You, you get what I'm saying? Well, you know, I didn't mean it like that. Mm, I know what you said. So, and because I've been through such tragic um, events, um, when you talk to me in a certain language, like if I'm in a relationship or, you know, whether it's a friendship, relationship, whatever, and someone raises their voice, that immediately causes me to get defensive because of where I've been. Because when voices were raised in my house, it was followed with a fist. It was followed with a slap. It was followed with abuse. And so here's the deal. I need you not to be ashamed of where you come from. I need you not to be ashamed of what you've been through. And this is why we're going to talk about how to write like a boss. Because I believe that everybody has a story. And we got to get to the place that we are unafraid to share our, our stories unapologetically and authentically. And so, you know, I want to ask you these questions this morning. How do you view yourself? A confident, a, 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 a woman that lacks confidence is an ineffective woman. And guess what? This is why many of us are so busy doing work in the kingdom, but is it effective? Is it impactful? Because we can get so busy with doing the work, doing the work, doing the work, doing the work, or reciting the scripture, or reciting the scripture, or preaching the word. But do you really believe the word that you're preaching? Do you really believe that death and life lie in the power of the tongue? Do you really believe that you are the righteousness of God? Do you really believe that you are a joint heir with Christ? Do you really believe that God cares for you? Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that or were you programmed? Do you really believe that you deserve God's best? Come on. Or were you programmed to, you know, when, when, do, you, do, you, do you esteem, um, which we should esteem others higher than ourselves. But here's the deal. If you can't love you, it's impossible to love somebody else. It's just impossible. If you don't love you, if you don't, do you take care of how you look? Come on, I'm not talking about to the degree that we we got to do the eyeliner, the makeup, and all that stuff. But what about even on the inside? Are you dealing with that hurt? Are you dealing with those childhood issues? Are you dealing with the pain of your past? Or do you suppress it and act like it doesn't exist? What do you say? So the first question is, how do you view yourself? Do you view yourself through the lenses of others? Your past? Or the lenses of God's word and what he says about your future. The second question is what do you say about you? When you fail at a particular task or, ende or endeavor or, or, or um, what's, I'm looking for another word. When you fail at a particular task or activity, that's the word I was looking for. Do you identify yourself as a failure? Do you say, dang, I'm stupid. When you, when you embrace uh, someone that is supposed to love you but turns out to abuse you do you call yourself stupid or do you say you know what they got me i believe the best in that person i lack discernment i i might i might have been fooled but i'm not a fool come on come on i might have failed but i'm not a failure and so we gotta stop taking our activities and trying to make them our reality the truth of the matter is we've all been fooled we all have failed, and if you haven't, keep living. But the truth of the, but, but you gotta understand this: that you have what it takes to overcome, no matter what it is that you've been through. But if you don't have people around you, whoever you lend your ear to, you give access to your soul. The soul is made up of the mind, the will, and the emotions. So if I can control what, if you if you allow me your ear, I'll have access to your soul, and when I have access to your soul, I can determine how you feel. Come on. Come on. So let's get to these. Oh, the, the third question. So number one is how do you view yourself? Number two is what do you say about you? And number three, oh, 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 what do you say about you? Do you say I can't build the business because nobody's going to support me? I can't write the book because nobody's going to buy it. Some of you de defeat yourself before you ever even get started. But sometimes you got to pause and be like, where that come from?
Where that thought come from? I don't think like that. Who told me, oh yeah, that was Uncle Larry because he molested me. I felt like I was good for nothing. Oh yeah, that was when my sister, you know, uh, uh, uh. Oh yeah, that was because my mother or my father abandoned me. Oh yeah. See, you got to get rid of the self-sabotaging beliefs. Get rid of these self-sabotaging behaviors. And it's time out for feeling sorry for yourself, boo. We all have a story. Come on, we, somebody say, I have a story. We all have a story, but here's the deal. Either you can have your story or your story will have you. Which one? When you, when you share your story unapologetic, when you open your mouth and you tell another sister, or you tell another brother, I've been there, done that, and guess what? I ain't going back to that. And here is how I keep saying, when you're unafraid to share people, share your weaknesses with those that God has called you to, that say, you know what? You don't wrestle with this alone. You know what? You don't go, you're not going through this by yourself. Let me tell you what I've done. But we live in such a secret society where I want you to feel like I'm long hair, don't care, don't got no struggles. I was listening to my dad's message um, this morning, Bishop R.C. Blake's from last night. He did it last night, but I was listening to it this morning where he was talking about secret sin. And he was saying, I got some struggles. The one he mentioned really shocked me. I was like, what? But... But it reminded me, we're all human. And I thought about my struggles. I thought about the things that I'm dealing with right now. I thought about the things that's been there for a while. And I thought about, you know, I just begin to think about all of these things. But guess what? In order for us to overcome, we got to get to the origin of the matter. We got to get to the genesis. We got to go back and say, okay, why do I think this way? Why do I feel this way? Why do I respond this way? Why when something is said, y'all better heart it up. Hello? Why when something is said, I respond like this? Why do you, do you, do you have a tendency to think negative first and positive later? Do you have a tendency to, to, if somebody's looking at you, which they could be admiring your shoes, your hair, your makeup, your nails, Come on, but do you automatically, well, oh, where's she looking at? Do you walk around with a chip on your shoulder like the world owes you something and then you wonder why ain't nobody in your box but you, yourself, and you? Come on, and remember I told you guys on last week, if you're the only one that you know, that in, that, that, that is not an enablement to grow. If you're the only one that you know, you won't be able to grow. You got to be able to get out of your comfort zone. Sometimes you got to be vulnerable. Come on, put yourself out there so that you can help other people overcome. Third question, how do you care for you? Some of y'all, we 30 days in, and you still talking about, I ain't got time to go to the gym, or, or, or eating healthy is too expensive. Okay. Do you care for your temple by monitoring what you eat, by monitoring what, by monitoring what you watch on television, what gets into your spirit? Because remember, the same thing applies for the ear gate, I mean the eye gate, as it does the ear gate. What you see affects how you feel. And then who do you surround yourself with? So if you're still talking about, I can't afford to eat healthy. I can't afford to, um, to go to the gym. You can go to the five and below. We all got one. Get you some weights, five pounds, ten pounds, whatever, five dollars. And look that stuff up on Instagram or Pinterest and get in your living room and rock it out. So excuses only satisfy those who make them. So when you get to the point where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're going to do something different. So the six points that I have this morning, uh, we're talking about developing a positive self-image, how to rebuild after you've been torn down. Number one, but before I get into number one, I want to say this. You got to refuse to accept. Maybe this will be number one. We'll make it seven points. You got to refuse to accept the negative words that have been spoken over you. Yeah. You got to refuse to accept them. You know, even when people say stuff now, you know how we joke and be like, <laughs> you so stupid. Like, I only play with them words. Like, I take that serious. Or oh, you so crazy. <laughs> because I was really called crazy. And there was a time that I really thought I was going crazy and was going to be in somebody's mental institute. So don't me crazy just tell me I'm funny I need you to find another adjective I need you to expand your vocabulary and find another word to describe what you feel like I just said oh you're so hilarious you're so funny you know but don't call me crazy don't call me you girl you dumb I used to do that I used to say oh you're so stupid and then I had to remember that words are containers of power 
And you never know what people have gone through. You never know what people have been through. And so if it doesn't edify, let it fly. Come on. If it doesn't edify, let it fly. That means don't say it. Don't release it. Come on. So number two. In order to develop a, a positive self-image and being able to, and, and building yourself up after you've been torn down. If y'all haven't already, swipe and invite. I thank you for those that already have. Number two, number one is refuse to accept the negative words that were spoken over you. Number two is you got to renounce all negative words. So after you refuse them, that means you reject them, right? That means you don't accept them. When you reject those negative words, number two, now you got to renounce them. The word renounce means to say something aloud, what you will no longer have or accept to formally give up. So that means I would no longer allow your negativity. I would no longer allow your abuse. I would no longer. See, people can only do what we allow. I would no longer allow. Some of y'all need to go back to your boo. I would no longer allow you to cheat on me. I would no longer allow you to beat on me. I would no longer allow you to lie on me. I would no longer allow you to use me. Some of y'all got the, all this stuff going on simply because you allow it. So number one, you got to refuse to accept those negative words. Number two, you got to renounce Every negative word. Number three, once you reject it, once you renounce, now you got to declare. You got to begin to declare God's word and God's truth over your life. Guess what? Watch this. <laughs> In the words of the late great, watch this. You know what I'm talking about, right? Declare God's word over your truth despite your reality. You got to declare God's word, God's truth. I'm sorry. You got to declare God's truth over your life despite your reality. You might be broke now. You might be robbing Peter to pay Paul. You might have a poverty mindset, but you got to begin to declare that I have a millionaire mind. You got. You might be broken. You might be broke, busted, and disgusted, but you got to begin to declare the opposite of what you see. Whatever you want to see manifested, that's what I need you to release. You might not have the boo now. But you declare, I thank God for my man, for my woman, whoever. Come on. You might not have children. You might have been told you were barren. You might have even had to have a hysterectomy. Let's go there. But we bless God for the adoption agency. Or you might never know that that auntie that can't raise that baby or that niece or that nephew or that, that daughter or whoever. And then, that, that, then you will have a child. You might not naturally birth. But love is love, right? So after you reject it. The negative words. You got to renounce the negative words. Then you got to begin to declare God's truth over your life. All of this has to do with reprogramming and uh, what's the word I'm looking at? Reconditioning. Okay. Number three leads me to number three. You got to recondition your mind. So you're going to reject. You're going to renounce. You're going to declare. And then now what you're going to do is recondition your mind. Okay. Now you're going to recondition your mind. Just like I'm reconditioning my body every morning when I'm working out and I'm doing the weights, right? And I'm working out and I'm getting it in. I'm, I'm retraining, I'm reprogramming, reconditioning my body, right? You got to also recondition your mind, meaning you got to start thinking about what you're thinking about. When somebody say something crazy, listen, then we got to grow up, right? Because when somebody say something crazy, we got to stop allowing other people to project. Watch this. We got to stop allowing other people to project on us how they really feel about themselves. Come on. How many times have you allowed somebody to make you feel like you're no good, you're unworthy, you don't deserve to be loved, you can't handle X, Y, and Z, ain't nobody going to love you, ain't nobody going to want you. They saying all this stuff because that's really how they feel about themselves. Oh, I'm this, I'm that, you calling me all this stuff when really that's how you feel about you, boo. Oh, you think you all of that. Mm, never said that. That's you. Dr. Matthew Stevenson was talking yesterday and he said, um, he said, you got to begin to become unapologetic about your shine. That means we were created to shine bright like a diamond. Jesus is the ultimate shining star. And because we're joint heirs of Christ, then we were created to shine bright too. So if you're constantly around people where you got to use small words because they, they, they vocabulary is limited, then you need to upgrade your circle and speak around those. Come on. That can hang with the kind of conversation or that can handle your intellect. And not to the point where you got to dumb down all the time because they feel uncomfortable. Or when you're around people that can't handle your success because every time you show up, you remind them of what they could have been. Or you constantly got people tearing down your dream because they don't have the courage to dream.
You want me to play small because you afraid to play at all. You got to get rid of people that want you to play small because they're afraid to play at all. Number four, we're talking about developing a positive self-image. How to rebuild after you've been torn down. Number four is you got to develop a healthy attitude about yourself, which will be a contributive factor to how you view and relate to others. So you got to begin to love you. You got to develop a healthy attitude towards yourself, y'all. We got to get to the point where we stop, you know, we stop comp uh, uh, identifying ourselves by our issues. You got to know that I don't care if you can't get your makeup perfect. I couldn't get my hair perfect today. I washed it, relaxed these edges, and this hair was acting all crazy this morning. But guess what? I'm still cute. Hello? What? You got to get to the point where you love you despite of where you've been. You love you despite of what you've done. You love you in the process of becoming. Because here's the deal. Without confidence, you can't even fulfill your call. So number four is you got to develop. Number five, you got to develop a healthy lifestyle. Number five, because we said number one was refuse to accept the negative words. Number two is you got to renounce all negative words. Number three is you got to declare God's truth over your life. Number four is you got to develop a healthy attitude. Number five is you got to recondition. Somebody say recondition. Put that all over the screen for me. Number five, recondition your mind from what they said to what God says about you. Recondition your mind from what they said to what God says about you. Our true identity cannot be found apart from Christ. So you got to recondition. You got to reprogram. That means you got to spend time working on you. You ain't got time to be gossiping about nobody else, listening to nobody else, lying to nobody else, sharing your opinion on blogs and Facebook and all of that stuff because at the end of the day, you got enough junk in your trunk to deal with that you ain't got time to worry about what Vicky Yohe doing. You ain't got time to worry about Kimberrell. You ain't got time to worry about nothing that's trending on social media. Because you got enough work to do on yourself. And the truth of the matter is, if we would refocus and do a lens check, boo, we could be a lot further than where we are now, but we tend to focus on the wrong thing. So number five, you got to uh, recondition your mind. I think I still got these numbers off. Number one is refuse to accept what's been spoken over you. Number two is to renounce all negative words. Number three is to declare God's truth over your life. Number four is to recondition your mind. Number five is to develop a healthy attitude about yourself. Number six is to recondition. And number seven, I messed it up because one of my points wasn't a point and I made it a point, but it's numbered a different way. Doesn't even matter. See, even that. Stop wasting time on things that really don't matter. Who cares? I meant to say this, but I said, okay, apologize and keep moving forward. Listen, if you're going to be a boss woman, if you're going to be a boss man, you're going to be able to admit your mistakes and make adjustments. Admit your mistakes and make adjustments. This is also going to help with a positive self-image because you'll become a woman or a man of integrity. Where you'll say, you know what, I don't always get it right. I don't all, and it'll help you be more compassionate. It'll help you be more patient. It'll help you be more aware and also more uh, warmer towards other people who may be struggling in areas that you have already overcome. Number seven, and finally, be strategic and intentional about who you spend your time with. You got to be careful who speaks over you because whoever speaks over you, I said this earlier, they have access to your soul. And that is your mind, will, and emotions. And whatever you hear will, will influence how you feel and what you do and say. Okay? So I'm going to go through these one more time. In developing a positive self-image, you got to, number one, refuse to accept negative words that were spoken over you. Number two is you got to renounce all negative words. Number three, you got to declare God's truth over your life. Number four, you got to recondition your mind. Number five, develop a healthy attitude about yourself. Number six, recondition your mind from what they said to what God said. Number seven, I think. Be strategic and intentional about who you spend your time with. So if you're on my email list, I actually will be sending this out. I'll be sending this out tomorrow, today, actually. I'll be sending this out today. So here's the deal. Make sure you go to CarlaCannon.com and that you click on, you go to the bottom and sign up to get my affirmations. You're so welcome that you sign up and get my affirmations and you will automatically be on my email list. I'm going to send this out this morning. Um, and so tomorrow we're going to do part two. Tomorrow we're going to do part two of developing a positive self-image. And I will actually be sharing some pearls of wisdom from this book that I'm reading called Spirit of Leadership. 
Spirit of Leadership, Cultivating the Attitudes that Influence Human Action. And this is a book by Dr. Miles Monroe. And so I'll be sharing part two. Excuse me. I'll be sharing part two of developing a positive self-image, how to rebuild after you've been torn down. And I'm going to go take this this, this off because i got to pull it too much. It's just too much. So i got a couple of meetings today, and i got to pull it too much. So I'm going I'm to take that off. So that's another thing. Don't stress out. You just make a change. You, you, sh you shift. So today we talked about developing a positive uh, image, how to rebuild after you've been torn down. Tomorrow we'll be coming with part two, and I'm actually going to share 12 principles from Dr. Miles Monroe's book called The Spirit of Leadership, Cultivating the Attitudes that Influence Human Action, okay? So I pray you guys were blessed today. If you want to get my products, you want to work with me, you want to book me as a speaker, just go to CarlaCannon.com. You also can email me, Carla at WomenOfStandard.org. The website is actually Carla cannon.com no r in the middle carla cannon.com so i pray you guys be blessed meet me back here tomorrow morning at 8 a.m eastern standard time i love you y'all have a phenomenal day make sure you check the replay i'm gonna do my best to upload this to youtube and thank you guys so much again have a good day remember it's making balls moves monday so continue to act like a boss think like a boss and move like a boss have a good day